Hello, it's me, Richard Herring, with another Rahalastapa this week with the brilliant Maisie Adam. Not Maisie Adams. Only say that if you want to make her silently furious. Now, look, I've got a new book coming out in November. It's called The Problem with Men. When's International Men's Day and why why it matters? Or all the initial letters of that in an acronym, if you want, for short. Um, you can already order it, and I believe the audio book as well, which I will be doing myself at Amazon, at Waterstones, all the usual places, motherfuckers. Go and pre-order it. Um, it would be lovely if it was a success. I think it's a nice book and has some interesting things to say, but mainly it's pretty funny. Also, it's quite short, so I think if you're a parent like me, that is an advantage. You can read it pretty quickly. Um, oh, also, uh, I have my radio show sitcom Relativity is currently on Radio 4, and you can catch up with that on BBC Sounds and illegally catch up on the first couple of series online if you are smart or if you just look in my blog for the link. Also, remember, gofossilstrike.com slash badges if you want to become a monthly badger. Remember, if you enjoy this Twitch stuff, there's all kinds of things going on in Twitch, including on Thursdays, usually, Ali and Herring's Twitch of Fun. Well worth your time. There's lots of snooker going on. Twitch.tv slash RK Herring. And if you're with Amazon Prime, you can give us some money every month for nothing, if you would like, by linking your accounts and then subscribing you can give it your money to us, but please give it to someone on Twitch if you don't give it to us. Because it's crazy. There's free money, a big vat of free money, and it's all Ian Amazon's. And let's take some of it off him because he's got enough. Anyway, let's sit back, relax, and enjoy Raha La Stapa with Maisie Adam. <laughs> Hello, please welcome a man who's been imagining drones in a field. It's Richard Herring. Hello, it's me. Welcome to another episode of uh, Richard Herring's Loopy Snooker Thorn podcast. I thought I'd name it in honour of uh, Willie Thorne, who sadly died today. I know he played two-player snooker, which is not something I approve of, but he, I think in his heart he was a self-playing snookerist and... Uh, well, definitely one of the funniest uh, snooker players, so I'm very sad to see him go. Though I was hanging around with Daniel Rashford uh, earlier today. I love f- old football, me, f- kicking stuff around with the footballs. Old Daniel Rashford, he's one of the good players, isn't he? I love him. Uh, he calls it Rahalist, but anyway, so I don't know if that's going to catch on. Um, uh, as people, some people are watching this live, hello to you. Love to see you all uh, here. Thank you for shouting out. Uh, some of you will be uh, consuming this podcast in about eight weeks after we've recorded it. So you can probably work out which day we recorded it on from my <laughs> topical, hilarious topical humour. But also I'm just wondering, you know, where the world is. Where it, I might, I'm going to make a prediction. You're in the second week of the second lockdown. That's my prediction. Uh, let's see if it comes true. I hope you're not. But uh, the way people are acting at the moment, uh, we've sort of been semi-let out. You may remember at this point, we can go to the shops. Um, we're going to do various things. Uh, people aren't. I went to the supermarket yesterday. No one's wearing masks. Uh, no one's really isolating properly. It's everyone's gone a bit crazy. It's we're going to be. We, it's, it's, it hasn't gone away. It's still there. The virus is still there. Until there's a cure, we're screwed. Uh, anyway, we've all got to get it. We might have had it. Let's hope so. Um, anyway, uh, the uh, the other thing that's been happening to this as we speak is. Um, People have been doing that face app thing again, turning, changing their gender. Uh, William Shatner as Kirk has turned into a very attractive woman. Someone's done it uh, for me today, uh, and that, that's that's me. For it's quite, that's me as a, a lady. It's pr- uh, quite nice, I think. Um, I think it looks a little bit like my wife. Others have said it looks a bit like Julia Swala, who's one of my previous girlfriends. So uh, either is slightly worrying. That, that, that possibly that one. I look at. I, the question I want to ask, I quite fancy myself, obviously, and is it cheating to have sex with yourself with your gender swap? That is the question I would ask for you. I mean, it's just, it would only be masturbation, with, but with a sort of clone version of yourself. Isn't that pretty nice, eh? I wouldn't say no. Um, you know, I'm a hot piece of ass. I don't want to sexually objectify myself, but uh, as a woman, I'm pretty good looking. I think that's what it does, though. It just makes all 
men look quite good as women, which uh, not necessarily the other way around. Uh, they did the cabinet, and I thought Dominic Raab was the surprise standout for me as a woman. Uh, but there we go. Um, and uh, what else is going on? Not a lot. Let me tell you about what's going on. This is uh, my Twitch uh, channel, uh, twitch.tv slash RK Herring. We're, as in lockdown, we're recording uh, these every Wednesday. So uh, come and check it out uh, uh, next Wednesday if you uh, if we're still doing them. Uh, I'm also recording, doing other various things like stone clearing and playing snooker against myself. Though those, I'm going to flip it around and try some different stuff as well, uh, doing film commentaries. Uh, you can subscribe on Twitch. Uh, if you're with Amazon Prime, you can actually give us five pounds every month without spending any actual of your own money. It's insane. Uh, there's if you go to my YouTube channel, Herring One Nine Six Seven, there is a video that explains that. Or why not become a monthly badger if you want to spend money? You can. Uh, you'll get like a lovely uh, membership bad thing. You can keep your Oyster card in this if you had an Oyster card. If they hadn't become sort of defunct, you get badges. You get a little membership pack with a code. Uh, you get access to all the backstage interviews and all sorts of lovely stuff. So why not? do that thanks for all the support you've been giving us during these difficult days of lockdown uh let me introduce my guest this week just check i've said everything i was meant to say yes i probably have uh she is probably best known for her appearance on the chase not the chase celebrities whatever that one's called the actual chase she was on the proper one ladies and gentlemen please welcome Maisie adam here she is hello <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good. I knew it. I yes. knew that would be my intro. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> it's very exciting. How did you get on in the chase? Oh, oh, like you don't know, Richard. Like you don't know. Um, but since you ask, I was the only contestant to take the lower offer. What was the lower right. offer, I hear you ask? Minus £300. What? Uh, yeah, minus £300. And uh, I was against Paul Sinner, comic. Yeah. And uh, But this was all before I started stand comedy. So I was a student at university took minus 300 and, uh, uh, and still didn't make my way back. Lost it. Right. Yeah. In fact, I'll give you the question that I got, yeah. if that's okay. Uh, yeah, what do. bird is on the national flag of Ecuador? Is it A, Oof. a toucan, B, yeah. a pelican, or C, a condor? Remember, I mean, there's, there's minus three hundred pounds at stake here, yeah, Richard. That's, hard, so. that's, a, that's a hard question. I am actually going on the chase myself <gasps> quite soon. Well, uh, I am going to say I think it's either a toucan or a pelican. I think it's got to be one of those. I'm going to say pelican because I think toucan's too stupid. Richard, you have yeah. made my day because the answer was <laughs> condor. <laughs> oh, was it? <laughs> See, it's harder. It's harder <laughs> than you think. It's it is very hard. I'm not. I'm not so particularly looking forward. Well, I am looking forward to doing it. Um, so did they did they win the money the the, the remaining three? <laughs> no, they didn't, and no. it's the worst thing I've ever done. But I let out a little squeal when they lost because up until that point, I was the only person who was who wasn't going to win their share of fifty two grand. Yeah. So um, which when I was a broke student was like, you know, the ultimate. <laughs> Uh, it would have been like a lottery win, and they they didn't get it, and I we had to all get the train back together, and I was like, oh, commiserations, guys. But inside, I was like, thank God. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, I'm looking forward to going on. It's had to be. It's been nudged. It was meant. I meant to have done it already. It was meant to be in April, but the coronavirus is. Oh. I was going to have a great year this year. I was going to be on the chase. I was doing another TV thing. I was doing also, and then it came. And I think I'm the biggest victim of. Yeah, the definitely. I, I think I'm the. Oh, it's, it's hit you hardest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's a terrible. A cancelled episode so of the chase. You must be yeah. beside yourself. It's awful. <laughs> it is. And I've had to spend a lot of time with my kids, and that is. Oh, a terrible it just punishment. gets worse. Terrible, terrible punishment. So I was often with newer comedians, and you're a newer comedian. I am. It's taken, it's taken them sort of. They're new, but they've been going for about ten years. <laughs> you're actually properly. You're actually you've you've done very well, very very quickly. You you've only been doing stand up for what four four years? Yeah, now, just coming up to four. Yeah, it'll be four years in October. Um, yeah, that's so. that's a that's a pretty impressive rise. Your first gig, which I'm interested in. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you would you'd been to uh, drama school. We might talk about that later. Yeah. But your first gig was at the Ilkley Fringe. Yeah, the the Ilkley which is quite an unusual first gig. It is. So um, I lived in a in a village up in um, North Yorkshire that was kind of there wasn't a lot of comedy going around, and so it was, it, I guess if most of my friends who are also coming up in in comedy now started on the London scene, where there's a, you know a gig every night five minutes from your house. There was no gigs where I was, and I couldn't work out how to get into it. But Ilkley Literature Festival, Ilkley sort of a 20-minute drive from where I was living. And as you said, I was, I'd was just finished drama school, didn't have an agent. There was no way of even being creative. 
um, I was working at a, in a mobile van in Millennium Square in Leeds, and uh, like a, there was a bar, uh, and um, Ilkley Literature Festival put a fringe on, and they asked for local artists, and you could come and do anything. It was like you can do spoken word, you can do dance, you can do poetry. So I said, oh, I filled in the little application, said stand-up comedy, and they came back and said, yep, yeah, here's your slot, and it was an hour on uh, on Thursday the 13th of October. <laughs> and I thought that was really normal because when you go see – comedy you know when, yeah. when you go and see someone come to Leeds Town Hall it's an hour long when you watch <laughs> comedy on Netflix it's an hour long so I was like brilliant so I wrote what I thought was funny for an hour I mean I, I watch it back now and it's um it's a it's a strong 10 spread over <laughs> 55 minutes but that was my first gig and it was there was no compa no, no nothing else and I made my own yeah. flyers and it was free and I just loved it and I my yeah. my Friend's dad had a good camera and he filmed it for me. And I sent it then to every promoter that I could find on Facebook. And normally they'd come back, you know, saying, Can I have a gig? And they'd go, Well, do you have 10 minutes? And I thought I was dead good. Going, I've got an hour. I've got an hour. <laughs> Enjoy this. Um, and then I just started getting into it from that, really. Sure. I mean, I guess having done acting, there's a, you know, you're used to being on stage, but that's still, that's. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's like, daunting enough doing your first. I mean, I suppose when you don't know, you don't know. Yes. But when you do the when you do the first performance of a new show, yeah, that's sort of a terrifying yeah for time sure. of. And I I do. In fact, the more I've gone on, as you say, it's still like not exactly a, a long illustrious career. It's four years in, but I do kind of still wish I had a lot of that naivety of just going straight in and doing it and not overthinking or worrying. Because I think now, if, if it had been the other way and I started with a five-minute spot working up to 10, I'd have never progressed. I'd have been overthinking every single minute, whereas sure. I thought, well, I've got an hour. If I'm not funny in the first five minutes, I can be funny in the next 50, So, <laughs> which I don't think is a great way to be. But I, I do kind of – I have to remind myself that that's how it started and, and to sort of be a bit more laid back with it. But you're right, I think having done acting, I was I was certainly comfortable on, on stage. And when I when – I, when I used to do acting, I was always in the funny roles, you know, the, yeah. the the comedy roles. And I liked that because you got immediate feedback straight away. Your job was to say your line and people would laugh. Whereas if you're playing Ju- uh, Juliet in Romeo and Juliet, you don't know if you're doing good until the very end where people are either crying and standing up and applauding or they're just sort of yeah. a bit unmoved. Yeah. So um, yeah, they don't usually heckle uh, Juliet. No, I haven't seen it. <laughs> if if you're <laughs> Juliet and you're being heckled, you're doing really bad, really bad. Uh, we are mortal enemies, by the way. I'm also from Yorkshire, but yes. I am from the I'm from the East Riding of East Yorkshire. Riding. It's not even West. not even you, you don't even get called East Yorkshire. It's East Riding. <laughs> East York. Riding, and you're the you're from the West Riding of Yorkshire. Well, so. well, yeah. Well, so well, we're I'm, bitter enemies. I'm actually like middle of nowhere because it's technically North Yorkshire, but Leeds was the nearest place, so we're no better. To, According to Wikipedia, in the West Riding, it's called Panal, right? Where you're from? Is that Panal? Panal. Panal. Panel. Panel. Yeah. Sorry, mate. It's a long time since I've been in Yorkshire. You can Where tell. are you from? Pocklington, aren't you? Pocklington, yeah. the East Riding of Yorkshire. Yeah. Pocklington. That, that accent's panel. gone, hasn't it? East it has gone a little bit. I did, have, I did have a very broad, until I was about four, I had a very broad Yorkshire accent. Oh, really? And then I moved to, then I moved to Leicestershire, and then I moved to Somerset. I can't and then imagine I moved to you with a broad Yorkshire accent. You'd have oh, to yeah, be no, called I've... Dickie Herring. <laughs> I found a tape of myself when I was about. Uh, I found a tape of myself when I was about five or six, maybe when I was about twelve. On the on, I'm so old. It was like a reel to reel tape recorder that I'd obviously found when I was a kid, and I'd record. You won't know any of these references, <laughs> uh, but I was. I recorded myself singing the um, theme tune to "Wait Till Your Father Gets Home," which was a, an unpopular cartoon right. when I was four years old. And it's, it's your mum and your dad oh, and really? your sisters too. Yeah, really, really full on, full on Yorkshire. But uh, yeah, it's you know, I'm, I'm, it's it's still there in my heart. It's still there in yeah, my heart. Yeah, that's what they uh, all not, say. Not really. Mm. Were you ever in the panel panto? That's the famous panto. No, that I wasn't. Place. I was never what? in Why this. Not? Also, our pantomime was in February. So that yeah. just to give you a little like insight into what sort of village I'm from. It's where the biggest event is that on the Wikipedia page of pant- is, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> all we've got going for us is a pantomime that we have. Two months after most pantomimes. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a good thing. Have you have you you've watched it though? Oh obviously. yeah, it, yeah, been to it. Good? And then often they're not um like you know how often it'll be uh, Snow White or Jack and the Beanstalk. I think the last one I saw it was Shrek. So <laughs> that's good. Well, I approve. That. That's the that's, sort uh... of place we're talking about. <laughs> that is good. Um, I've noticed this is some, this is way off in a different direction now. I meant to say this at the beginning, but I've noticed in when you've been interviewed, a lot of people call you Maisie Adams with this oh, on the end. Oh yes. But you, uh, you don't, you don't rise to it and correct them. I've noticed. Would you? Are you happy to be called? Adams? It's a difficult one. I, I have this yeah. a lot. Like, and I, I think maybe, maybe it's different because you've been around, like, in the in the entertainment industry for a bit longer. So it's kind of, it's a, it's a status thing. I don't feel, which is stupid. I hear myself say that, and I go, "It's your name. You should correct people on your name." But um, sometimes I feel like I just look like that rising star who's correcting someone who's been on who's been on the circuit for years, and I'm going yeah. Adam actually, not Adam. <laughs> and I feel like they're just going to tell me to bugger off out the club. Like, I, yeah. so I don't know. But you're right. I should I should correct you people should. on my name. It's. I was really tempted to do it on purpose things. all the way through this oh, and, see, and see how long it took you to say anything. The worst but, one is uh, um, when I've gigged in. I, I went out to Montreal, and they all introduced me as Macy. That literally right, makes Macy. my toes curl like that. Is being called Macy because it's yeah. I can I can cope with a, a pluralization of my last name, but Macy, I'm not a department store. It's just ugh, I can't stand it. No offense to anybody called Macy, obviously. No, I, they, they will have taken offense. I don't think anyone called Macy is uh, watching, possibly listening. I'll, I'll let you know. Yeah, when do they, let me know. The, do let me know when it all comes in. <laughs> um, and what I quite like about you as well is I looked at your Wikipedia page and and it quotes oh, no. to prove your age. It quotes a tweet that you made when you were on your 18th birthday. Oh no! And What's the that? idea? The idea that you could be 18 and still on Twitter, obviously to me, is mind blowing. You're on the on your 18th birthday. You tweeted, and this is this is so evidence of your age. Had a mint birthday and drove to school like the pro driver I am. Oh, no. <laughs> Hashtag 18, don't stop me now. Oh, no. <laughs> That's on your Wikipedia That's page. On Wikipedia page. Yeah. yeah. So, Driving th- it to seems... school like the pro I am. Yeah. It's nice, but it's sort of... See, see, the thing, I'm so glad that social media and the internet... I mean, in ways, I wish the internet had been around when I was 18, but I'm so glad that all my it juvenilia... It comes back to bite you. It yeah, really it's does. not there. That's terrible. I took seven times to pass my driving test. <laughs> <Did you? laughs> and you still passed by the time you were 18. That's yeah, still I passed impressive. a week before my 18th. So I was clearly keen to get that out there into the world that I was driving before I was 18. Bloody hell. <laughs> oh, that's nice. That's very nice. Oh, that's uh, mortifying. <laughs> There's no on the Wikipedia page for panel. There is no famous people from panel. They don't put anyone on there. Is there oh. anyone famous from there apart from yourself? Who's, who's I don't think there? so. Unless Shrek no. was from there, and that's why they did the panto. Maybe Shrek, <laughs> Shrek the ogre. There's nearly always a famous person. So that's oh uh, wow. Well, that's 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 my next career goal. When people say what next, most people most comedians answer is oh, I don't know, Live at the Apollo, a Netflix special. I just quite like to be on the um, panel Wikipedia yeah. page. Yeah. Even your school, your school doesn't. You're a head girl at your school. That's that's an, that's annoying. Somebody has told me that that I'm not on my school's Wikipedia page. Yeah, I was, you're not as on head girl. Page. Yeah. Yeah. They don't. They've disowned you. That's that's fuming, isn't it? They, yeah. they still talk about this lad who used to play football for like Leeds United, but he like he he, he left after injury, and then here I am. You know, <laughs> here I am. I've been on the chase. That's huge. Yeah, you've that's been on. The, I mean, it should be the chase should have been enough. That was even before all the rest of it. I had a weird thing. I was listening to you on a podcast, uh, on Rosie Jones's podcast. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, last weekend, I do a thing on Twitch where I watch bad films and do a oh. commentary over them. And I did, and I was just thinking about this as I was listening to your podcast, and I did a commentary on the film White Chicks. Oh, yes. Partly to see whether, um, you know, yes. the people who were, well, partly to explain to people the difference between black blackface and whiteface. Because it's but not then the same, used, but a lot of people it's not convinced the same. it is. It's not the same. But also White Chicks, as it turns out, race barely enters into yeah. it's a, it. Race and sex, for a, for a film that's about uh, someone t- changing gender and race, there's very little to say about yes. either of those things. Yeah, you're right. Apart from it being, I mean, it's not racist, but it's, it's, it's pretty sexist. It's so bad. But you, as a child, as a teenager, I'm guessing, you learnt the uh, the dance from white oh. chicks to impress 
So that was very weird because I was just thinking about it and then suddenly you start doing about white chicks. Oh, God. And learning the dance to impress a boy. So bad. It's so bad. <laughs> really sad. So bad. I, I mean, when I think of the, the stuff, like, I, um, I pretended to like the music of, uh, uh, I can't even remember his name. He was a rapper. And it like really, really Dappy for men dubs. That's it. Uh, and I I pretended to be really into Dappy as well. For but I mean that could be a podcast in itself. Stupid yeah. shit I've done in order to <laughs> impress a boy. Um, and uh, yeah, the the dance from White Chicks was a particularly bleak one. I think. So were you did you learn the the it's tricky that the yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the way and brothers dance. You know at the so end it, of it, you know at the end of school um, when like the teacher can't be asked to do a lesson. This lad had brought it, and, and everybody could bring in a DVD, and you'd have to pitch as to why your DVD should be watched in the lesson. This lad brought in White Chicks and said it was the funniest film in the world, and everybody should see it. And so eventually, everybody, and he was quite popular and quite good looking, so we all voted yeah. for it, and we watched it. I probably laughed twice as hard as what it merited, and uh, we were all going out dancing that weekend. Going out dancing, I said that like I was a pensioner. Um, going out to the club and uh, yeah, and I learned this it's tricky dance and then like sort of met him on the dance floor and was showing him that it's tricky and oh my god I think a bit back now and I I just um, oh it make, it makes me really sick. It's 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 very sweet and lovely you did it and then he did he wasn't he didn't it's, he was unimpressed uh, yeah and, yeah like and got he, off with he, someone else he barely even sort of acknowledged it he was like oh right okay yeah oh, dear. yeah it was bleak it was bleak it's so sad it's so sad. well if his white chicks was his favorite film you're better off without him I have to Absolutely. tell you if, that, if that's, I have if that's to say, his idea. I don't think I realised I had such a tragic life up until this point, until I came on this podcast. And I, I realised <laughs> I lost money on the chase. I learned a dance to impress a boy. It took seven times to pass my test, and I've never been in the village yeah. panto. What? That's I'm, what it's I'm all about. This, this just, I'm just here to undermine the new comedians until they give and to make them give up because you're just, you know, you're going to take my jobs. You come over here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, come over here. Take come it from, here, the, from the West Milton. Riding of Yorkshire. Yeah. It's very oh. problematic. There's a bit. There's a bit where I mean, Terry Crews is actually very funny in the film, and he's the only funny thing in the yeah. film. But there's a bit where the, one of the other guys gives him basically a roofie to put in the oh Wayan God. brothers who's just drink, and he kind of go, and all he says is, "Will this definitely work?" I think there's no. It's is this so morally bad. correct? It's so bad. I did um, Brett Goldstein's podcast recently. For oh yes. to be buried with, yeah. and um, one of them was like, "What was the funniest film?" when you were sort of in your, you know, what was the film that made you really laugh? Yeah. And this answer was true, but it, I'm kind of ashamed of it. It was super bad. And we watched it recently. Me and my boyfriend re-watched it because we remember it being, and it's it's such a quotable film, even to this day, still quoting it. We watched it back and we were like, the plot of this story is essentially two lads want to get girls so drunk that they can lose their virginity before they go to college. And the only way that they think they can lose their virginity is to get a girl so blackout drunk at a party. Like, it's it's so bad. It's so well, bad. It's like, what's the, it's so many of these things uh, are so recent. That's the thing. It's it's, it's incredible how quickly yeah. the, the moral compasses have shifted on that, because I was talking the other week about How I Met Your Mother, which is basically all the main character in that is essentially a date rapist yeah. and who wants to have sex with girls and then dump them and dumps them in horrible ways, but also is tricking them into bed and filming them oh without God. their knowledge. And it's all, a, it, that, it's all a joke. And that's finished in something like 2016. It's so yeah. recent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so it's, it's, a, it's sort of amazing the way we're well, obviously at the moment it's a, it's a, it's a lot about uh, racial comedy that's, that's kind of hitting the, high, the headlines. But, you know, all these pe- people are apologising about that from 2012 yeah. or whatever. Yeah, the pace then, at which you know, it's changed is so yeah. quicker in the last few years. And it has, we've, uh, during lockdown, we've started to rewatch all of the James Bond films. And so right. we only started this a couple of, like a, a last week or week before. So we've just finished right. the, the early Sean Connery ones. And um, yeah, they're, they're pretty sexist. They're pretty bad. But at least you can go, well, it was 1962. Whereas <laughs> yes. you look at something like White Chicks or, or uh, have I met yeah. your, How I Met Your Mother or, or, or Superbad, and you're thinking, this was in the last 10 years. Like, it's <laughs> so bad. It's so bad. But comedy goes through these – I mean, it goes back and forth. I mean, hopefully not too far back and, you know. Yeah. It, it, 
but obviously the eight when the seventies went to the end. The stuff I grew up on, the stuff was on TV in the seventies, was properly just full on racist. You're, you know, yeah. comedians on TV were using all the the words and all the the, the stereotypical jokes, yeah. and it was absolutely fine. And then obviously, sta- uh, alternative comedy changed that somewhat, but then you know, sort of not as well. It's, it's just I I sort of feel. Like in the early 2000s, I think a lot of people felt, oh, we've sorted out sexism, yeah. racism. Now we're allowed to go back to it. And and I think that's, and of course, we clearly have. Yeah, it was one step out. forward, two steps back. Yeah. Uh, the, the, and in hindsight, it just, it seems bewildering. I do, I have to say, I find it bewildering anyone would do blackface, although <laughs> would do blackface at all. But, uh, but it's like when it becomes. It, there's a there's a grey area in it, I suppose, when it's League of Gentlemen, yeah. or where somebody using blackface in a sketch to to deliberately be offensive in order to discuss the issues around it. Yes. The problem is when censorship comes into it, it just is. Oh, they've got something black on their face, and therefore that yeah. is. Yeah, we watched a film recently. I think it's uh, it's Ben Stiller, th- Tropic Thunder, and yes, Robert yeah. Downey Jr. Yeah, blacks up in that. But his character is a is a dickhead method actor yeah. who thinks, yeah. well, I'm going to be playing a black person, so therefore I've got to, you know, I'm going to black up to learn how to be black. And, and the whole joke is, well, you shouldn't be cast in the first place. That that's the yeah, joke. Yeah. So you're right. It's the it's it's well, that's the but there's no when we did weirdly when we were releasing the Fist of Fun uh, DVDs. Um, like twenty, yeah, you know, 10, 15 years after we'd done our TV series with Stuart and. Um, they suddenly got it was all around Andrew Sachs, um, Russell oh, Brand yes. kind of time, and they suddenly got really worried about stuff. And then you just sort of see they've got a list of things that you're not supposed to do, and they, there's and there's no way of applying it. And they came back and told us certain things were absolutely impossible. There was no way they could go out. We had a sketch about teachers where one of the teachers, where Stu's teacher, was basically flirting with, you know, the girls in the class mm. and and being being inappropriate with them. And they came back and said, well, obviously this can't go out because in that week. The week with the, we were having the discussion, uh, uh, someone had been off. Uh, that teacher had taken a girl off to France or something. Oh yeah, that, I so. remember that. But yeah, you know, that was the week we were having the discussion. That wasn't the week it was coming out. No. So it was a DVD. It wasn't coming out for another seven or eight months. It, it's a fun and you one. can't, you know. And so that would be forgotten. But also, there yeah, were, things would. Ha- and so, like some often, when you get a, a censor who's just got a list of, that, and that's where you can get. I guess with some of our shows we do on TV, we got round so much. By just not using the language that the specific was on their language, list. yeah. But we would say things that were actually much more offensive, but because they weren't on their list, they were expressed in a different way. Yeah, you'd get away with it. But uh, yeah, it's it's um, it's interesting, and I guess you know, there's, I'd, it, it was very weird watching. what I'd never seen White Chicks. I'd seen Little yeah. Man, which is another very offensive film. Yeah, towards, uh, yeah, I remember that to, one as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. It's it's they're, they're sort of historical documents, but I guess nobody is uh, is saying we have to burn all the DVDs. No, just, no. Is, the is, outrage is... that's come from <laughs> sort of taking like Little Britain off and stuff. It, yeah, the outrage is is a bit ridiculous. You're like, well, no, that should that that shouldn't be okay. Like, I think no. it's, I think it's the right thing to take them off and and go that that was wrong then, so it's wrong now. Yeah. And the well, people that are kicking like... off about it, I don't really <laughs> like. If you're that bothered about it, go to HMV and get the DVD. Like, <laughs> I think especially the people who are kicking off about "Come Fly with Me," which I don't think anyone enjoyed at the time. Oh, so yeah. it's not. It just it, nothing. It was. It was a bit of a dab squib, and then it disappeared. It's such they, a strange they, they, we thing. We can't to... watch "Come Fly with Me" anymore. <laughs> I mean, it's really baffling to think that that's there is a group of people out there who are devastated at the fact that "Come Fly with Me" is not on anymore. Oh dear. So. Um, <laughs> let me. We'll ask you an emergency. Oh no! I'll, let, I'll talk. First of all, I I saw you in this, and you were great. This is I think I'd, before I even knew you were a comedian. You were in the Urban Myths. Oh yeah, uh, the Sex Pistols versus Bill Grundy playing Susie Sue. Yeah, so that was my first was, acting role out of drama school. That, my, my only one, I should add right, as well. So was that before you were? A, was that before you were a stand up? Yeah, was that? Yeah, yeah, that was before I was a stand up. Um, and I get. I think it was around that time that we were filming it that I was like, "This is amazing to be acting." But the jobs like this come up, you know, so rarely. Most of my friends who'd come out of drama school didn't have any work. And if they did, they were the extra in the background of a 10-second advert that only went out, you know, online. It was really, yeah. you know, very, very select work. Um, and then I got this role uh, 
of being Susie Sue, which is like first acting roles get that's pretty pretty cool. And my mum my mum's a punk, so right. I grew up <laughs> knowing about this incident, the Bill Grundy interview. Yeah. And I grew up around all of this music, and 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 I couldn't believe I got because I didn't think I looked anything like her. Um, but they put this big yeah, peroxide the, blonde wig yeah. on and everything. Yeah. yeah, it was it was so much fun, and we had to we had to watch the interview over and over and over and over again to get it verbatim and, and Steve yeah. Pemberton was was Bill Grundy that's right yeah, yeah and so it was it was really special to do yeah and and it was it was nice being around Kieran Hodgson who's, who's a comic he was uh, Malcolm McLaren in that as well so it was nice to be around comic actors and I yeah. think I sort of realized like this is fun but it's me reading lines that have been put down and I'm playing somebody whereas what these guys do when they're not doing this i.e comedy that's, there's so much more freedom in that. And I, I remember being, it was around that time that I thought, this acting's good, but what I'm doing now comes up so rarely. Maybe yeah. comedy is something to consider. Um, and then the bright lights of Ilkley beckoned. <laughs> well, it's great. That, it's a great, so I really like that Urban Myth series. It's quite yeah. a rare thing where it's a, a standalone. I mean, no, they're all the same idea of... of possibly true possibly not true yeah. things with celebrities but it's a standalone thing each week and so some of them aren't as good as others but i you know that that was a particularly uh, enjoyable one. you were very good in that thank you um Cheers. let me ask you the, a new emergency question based on uh, this uh, face swap thing oh. i often ask about what is considered cheating in a relationship would you consider it to be cheating to sleep with a gender reverse version of yourself if you're um, if you were in a relationship with, yeah. and you had sex with the male version of yourself that had been it's not just it's been clone created so it's a clone of you yeah the, the male version of you i've seen the male version of me i've, I've put this yeah. thing on before and yeah. I, like you i am like fit i saw i, I didn't expect it I, you know i think i was expecting just sort of this with a, a beard or something but it's not like my jawline was different i was absolutely <laughs> gorgeous and yeah. I, the first thing I said to Mike, my, my boyfriend, I just showed him, I said, if he existed, I would bang him. I would bang him. <laughs> and I'd, I'd be honest about it. I'd be very open about it. And I think, frankly, if he didn't understand, that was more of a reflection yeah. on him than me. Good. I'm glad. I'm, I was I'm really, glad really fit. That. Really fit. Yeah. I mean, I think that my one is also, they, you know, it's 30 years younger than me, I would say. <laughs> yeah. so that makes it much easier to find attractive. Uh, but, uh, but there we go. Um, how are you finding lockdown? Oh, you, because you, you, I asked you on to the, uh, oh, yeah. to the theatre uh, and you were going off to Melbourne and Adelaide, weren't you? To, yeah. To, so did you, did you get to Australia? Did Adelaide. Um, yeah. And then I was meant to fly back in the week between anyway uh, to film right. QI, and, uh, which I did. And then right. they just said, don't bother coming back out because Melbourne's cancelled. Wow. So, okay. uh, yeah, just did Adelaide and then did an episode of QI. And by that point, we were allowed to go to the studio to film it, but no audience. And I'd never been on QI before. This episode hasn't gone out when we record this. It's still not gone out. But, uh, it, yeah, there was no audience it was just the hair and makeup lady, a couple of runners <laughs> in a 400 seater studio, and Sandy Toxfig's wife. So uh, <laughs> it wasn't dissimilar to my Ilkley gig, I'll be honest. <laughs> but, um, well, that's cool. Well, I'm glad you got to do Adelaide because it was, I oh, know a lot of people were, yeah, did you have a good time? Yeah. I've, I've done that, but it wasn't an official festival year, but I did Adelaide. There was a comedy festival in Adelaide in something like 97. Yeah. So I know Adelaide really well. I did it. Did, did, yeah, it's it's a really it's a lovely cool place. place yeah, yeah, really, really nice. So, um, and hopefully, I'll I'll get to go to Melbourne uh, at some point. So, and were you planning doing Edinburgh this year? Was that on the cards? Or yeah, was that it, not was, on... it was. Yeah. It was. So it would have been my third Edinburgh. Um, and uh, I, 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 it's difficult because th there was this weird time where where Melbourne had been cancelled, and pretty much all of the gigs that were used for previews in the run up to Edinburgh were cancelled. You know, all of these. Uh, preview festivals that go on in May, like Brighton Fringe, that was cancelled. And then um, Edinburgh was still in. And I was like, we're going to be going up to Edinburgh with a show that we've not ever done. Uh, again, it would be like Ilkley. It would be Ilkley. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You'd, you'd, be, you'd be the only person who did well. It, it's like, I've done yeah, this just... before, guys, honestly. <laughs> Don't worry. No, but I was, I was really sort of nervous by it. And then when the Olympics got pulled, I thought, there's no way they're pulling an event that people wait every four years for and train for four years for, and they're still going to put on 
something where you can go and see someone's comedy show above an Italian restaurant at 2 p.m. Like, <laughs> that's not going to happen. So when Edinburgh was cancelled, it was it was obviously quite sad, but there was an element as well of like, well, it, I, I need that. I needed it to be cancelled because I didn't have yeah. it half as much as of the preparation as, as normal. It could have been, you know, it could, I guess for but there would definitely be people who had, you know, three quarters of a show together. Yeah, guess, people who didn't go in 2019 as well. Yeah, that's why I always start. I always start working on my show in June, oh. and then that's why. Then you're safe. That's what I always do. That's really so, um, good advice, fun. Richard. <laughs> it is so from the future. Just in case there's a virus, every other year it's been a problem because it's not really enough time to write a show, but. <laughs> This year, no, I wasn't going to do a show. I wasn't going to do a stand-up show this year. I was going to do some uh, podcasts up there. Uh, yeah, it's, it's the Olympics is incredible, isn't it? Because so many people will have trained for that specific year, yeah. and next year they won't be no. at the peak of their fitness, no. or they'll be on on the way down. It, when you, when you every really think years. about the implication, yeah. it is massive. It's absolutely yeah. massive. Um, nice. Yeah, the pole vaulters have had it worse, definitely. <laughs> you know who's come out worse of this pandemic? Pole vaulters. That is pretty bad yeah. for them. Uh, and how is lockdown? But you're you're in Brighton, are you? In Brighton, um, yeah. and I'm with my my boyfriend and my younger brother, which is an interesting dynamic for. That's two different people, right? Yes, yes. I know Yorkshire's okay. got yeah. some uh, some rumours. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, uh, no, I'd like to, to 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 have it on the record that they're two different people. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's been it's been so my brother's uh, 21, and uh, we're. He he works in like retail, and my boyfriend runs a bar, and I obviously do comedy. So none of us are like highly in demand right now. <laughs> we're all we were all sort of like, well, we're going to be the last ones to go yeah. go back up. So, um, which I, I always feel like I need to follow that sentence with, um, which is obviously terrible because we really miss work and we just want to be back straight away. Honestly, we've got all the time in the world. Like <laughs> every time Boris it... comes on TV and he's like, "It won't be for another few weeks." I was like, "Okay, that's fine. Okay, all right." Well, a lot of people are kind of having fun. I think it's you know, I yeah. think it's 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 obviously not great for lots and lots this of people. This is the thing. But... Like, I, yeah, I don't want to come across like I'm I'm making light of it all, but but it's important, I think, to remember that there's people who are having a really tough time with it all, and and yeah. it, and it's really difficult for them, and that isn't. The situation with you know we're very very lucky so um it's kind of hard to be negative about it when when well, i don't really feel like we have a right to be do you know what i mean no um the most the most <laughs> difficult aspect of it is uh is sort of like having to having to having to live with a, with your boyfriend and your brother and kind of navigate those relationships separately uh, yes. it's sort of like, well, you know, I love you both very much, but in very different ways. Uh, <laughs> the only thing they've got in common is they both had a bath with me, um, and they were very different <laughs> types of bath. One, one was erotic, and the other one, uh, he shat in. So, very different. <laughs> Um, so we still don't know which was no, which. That no, is the, it's that a terrible, still, terrible still... habit my boyfriend's got there. <laughs> um, and so I presume your brother, um, if once now the lockdown is allowing uh, part, you know, uh, lovers. Yes, to what's enter they the called? Flat. Support bubbles. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, as soon is as it... that was mentioned, that support bubble, <laughs> he was straight out the door to his girlfriends. Yeah. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, that yeah. support I mean, bubble that's... reminded me of. Um, do you remember that advert for uh, like a cogni- incognito mode on a on a laptop? And oh, the yes. advert showed this guy, and it was like, "Oh, it's for when you're looking for jewelry to buy your wife." <laughs> and everybody was like, "It's for porn. It's for porn." Yeah. When Boris was like, "Support bubbles for if you're lonely to be with another adult," we were like, "It's it's to hook up." It's- yeah, and he did say he did sort of specify it had to be a loved one. So I think that's a dangerous thing to go and have yeah. your fuck buddy and go oh you're saying i'm a loved one yeah. now so it's could, it could have created the, more uh, problems i think the world. l-bomb will have been dropped a lot on tinder recently <laughs> <laughs> i just but that's the thing you know if this had happened in the 1990s uh when i was single and there were if there, there was really no internet yeah. or anything when you know the early 90s there was no way of communicating with anyone i just think I mean, I think at least we, the the internet is there in every in every regard for buying jewelry. Buying jewelry, <laughs> yeah, it's the jewelry you'd be after. <laughs> so that that would be a help, but um, yeah, I just don't know how I would have how, how I would have coped with if if you were literally on your own. Yeah. It's nice that uh, it's nice that you're in a in a little uh, 
group there. Yes. But there, there, you know, I have talked to comics who are who've been <laughs> basically alone Honestly, for like... three months. Which, and I think, do you, do you think as a comedian, uh, not getting that stage time? A, you're obviously you're you're not going to be as good at comedy when you go back to you've lost you know lost a bit of practice. Yeah. But to, to not get the adrenaline rush and the endorphins of a this is of the thing. being approved of, you realize how of kind of narcissistic you are yeah. because of what your job role is. Like, I'll find myself telling a story in sort of a half, half <laughs> off stage Maisie, half on stage Maisie way. And when it sort sure. of just gets a titter from my boyfriend <laughs> and brother, I sort of, you know, storm out the room a little bit. Like, like how you storm out of a club that you died at being like, oh, well, the crowd was shit. I sort of, you know, go into the bathroom a little bit like, oh, well, they weren't ready for this. They weren't ready. They didn't, yeah. they didn't get my stuff. They, did, they didn't get it. It's, like, it's really, um, yeah, I, I've sort of had to reteach myself to just sort of have conversations and not try to get a little joke in here and there, or, you know. And um, I, don't think, sure. I don't think trying to do that all the time of, of trying to get a joke in and then just excusing it with, um, I'm just trying to stay match fit. I'm just trying to stay match fit. <laughs> I don't think that makes yourself a, a particularly um, uh, attractive flatmate to have. No, I think that's true. Someone who's that always on. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm always trying to make my kids laugh, but they don't. My daughter's five and she's already outgrown anything I can yeah, do. Yeah, tough crowd, laugh. tough crowd. It is very, she's very tough. She won't, she won't laugh at, did, I mean, deliberately, she deliberately, it's you so can see mean. I almost make her laugh, but she won't allow this herself to laugh at me. I'll say I some thought stuff I'd get till she was 12. Yeah, Mike will go, he'll, he'll just go, um, oh, and you, you're confident you can return to that industry, are you? Like, it's savage. It's sa- How many plumbers are doing that? You know, just like fixing the toilet and their wife's going, well, well. You think you can return to that, do you? It's, uh, and have you been doing online gigs? Oh, or have you been, yeah. So I think I've done a, just a couple. Yeah. Um, and the 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 ones that are sort of like a, an online quiz or a, a live stream chat, you know, or a, a game of like yeah. sort of would you rather something with a structure, you know, like this. It's it's fine, but it's the ones where they're like. Just do stand up to the camera from your house. Just tell jokes into the camera. From, like it'll be fine. And I yeah. thought I'm not sure about that. And I, I I buckled eventually, and I did one. And it was uh, it was essentially like this. So a, a Zoom chat, but the MC just sort of handed over to you and was like, "Off you go." And meanwhile, I could have the uh, it looked like an Excel spreadsheet of comments coming up. Oh, yes. And uh, I had to do 20 minutes, and I thought, well, I'll do you know about 15 minutes of material, and then the last five I can fill with, oh, Maureen from Kent says this, and I can have a bit of thing. And the the I don't know what went on with whoever was organising it, but the the sound and the audio was just complete. The tech just went to shit, and so yeah. the only messages that were coming in as I was doing these jokes to camera were, um, I've got sound but no visual. I've got visual but no sound. The, the tech shit, I'm off. Uh, it was all like really, really savage. Uh, just uh, I won't be tuning in because I can't hear anything. That's the only stuff I had to go off. So <laughs> normally if you do a, a, a gig in a club, the worst you're going to get is some drunk stag party shouting one thing at you and, you know, you, you deal with it then. But when it's just a stream of messages <laughs> saying that the tech is rubbish and then there's nothing you can do on your end and you don't know whether to acknowledge them or... Or, or carry on with your jokes. So the only yeah. interaction I was really having was going mid joke. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? What about now? Oh, it's Maureen from Kent says I'm frozen. Uh, do, we, do we know what to do about that? It was oh yeah. I was offered a fifty. Well, I was offered to get the next up of doing. I think through July doing yeah. um uh, like full sets though, but it's fifty minute sets. I haven't actually done stand up in a cl- for more than like ten minutes. I've done a few charity gigs in the last eighteen months. I've just been doing this and yeah, um, and I and I sort of stopped doing stand up so I could tour this and not be away all the time. <laughs> uh, and so like I thought, can I can I really have my first? Will I be able to do fifty minutes? <laughs> can I remember fifty minutes of stuff? And can I do that to uh, to nobody? Just to a camera? So I, I decided not to. I nearly did it just to. Yeah. force myself to do something but then i just thought it's going to be too painful and like 50 minutes oh don't when i'm you... doing it i'm doing that are you yeah one. yeah well um, but at least you've been working so you've got you've got some stuff but i you know i just I'll don't just do Ill I, play I, again that was 50 yeah minutes. i did that one but i'd have to relearn everything and yeah. then you know it's hard isn't I mean, I guess it it's hard it to is. go straight in with a as you say like there's, there's not many short you know 20 minute things uh, those opportunities to do like 20 minutes of comedy 
And then yeah. the next kind of, the next comedy thing I've got booked in that's just stand up is this, and it's fifty minutes, right. and you yeah. you're thinking, well, I've not I've not been on stage for three months, so I, I don't yeah. I don't know, you know. Well, um, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. I think it'll be you know I think it'll be uh, it'll be good. Yeah. It's, you know it's not. I think it's I think it's nice. I think there's I think there's lots of positives to take out of all. I don't know when we're gonna be back. Right, that, that's what I, that's what I fear most. I think yeah. it's gonna be. And probably another six, seven months, and maybe longer than that. And then, if it's that long, I think a lot of things are going to fall by the wayside. But the but the clubs, and it's the clubs more than the com- the comedians will survive somehow. Yes, by you know working in some doing other jobs yeah. and, and whatever. But the clubs aren't there when we get back. If the theatres aren't there when we get back. If the art centres aren't there when we get back, then we've got nowhere to work. Um, so that's that's the thing that sort of uh, worries me about it. But also, I think if the clubs are clever. They will see the positives, you know, like the clubs that are broadcasting to the world at the moment. You can still do that with an audience, yeah. you know, and there's all these people who can't get to the stand in Edinburgh yeah. on a Saturday night because they don't live in Edinburgh yeah. or, and they, you know, and so you can show that around the world and and, and sort of who knows how much. It's income interesting, you isn't it? I think, yeah. um, what's his name? He used to be on Dragon's Day. Theo Pafitis was on saying that um, this whole pandemic has fast forwarded the retail industry by about five years. And then I thought, well, that's probably the same across most industries, really. And I think probably with comedy as well, as, as a live industry, I, I imagine this has probably fast-forwarded so much in terms of people people who usually prefer to go to clubs and because they don't like, you know, the Netflix, original, that sort of manufactured thing. I don't know, people, in the same way that people who prefer to go shopping on the high street rather than ASOS or whatever. Yeah. Whereas now that's all that's been available, so they've had time to familiarise themselves with that format. I don't know, but I think, I think, I think hopefully we'll go back to clubs and stuff. But I also think there will be a huge sort of pro- propellering of, of going towards online comedy being. An, a, a, I'm going to say the phrase now, and I hate myself for it, but the new normal. Maybe, but you know, will. The thing about the clubs and the thing that I think has been really, you know, why I got behind the Just the Heckle, uh, the Heckle the Virus Just Giving campaign was you can't get to the stage where you're doing a Netflix special without, without doing, doing the doing stage. Without doing the groundwork, yeah. With this, where, where you're doing the clubs and working working how to be a comedian. I mean, you can, but you, there are YouTube people who be, who then do yeah, specials. Yeah, right. you're right. But they're not, they're not comedians and they're not... Yeah, you know, it's and it's that's not, the thing as well. Bad for comedy in the long run. I was chatting to a, a musician friend, and he was saying, you know, all of these like arenas will still be there, but huge festivals will still be there, but these little independent venues that nurture up and coming brands, yeah. that's that that's what will be detrimental to the music industry is that you won't have. How do you suddenly go from practicing in you've made garage to playing an arena? You have to work your way up, and it's the same with comedy, I suppose, isn't it? You can't just suddenly be on a Netflix special or playing. Uh, the comedy store in LA without having done all of these tinier venues and doing the groundwork. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's an interest. It'll be interesting to see how it. We'll how see. Out. We'll see. I had gigs booked in for June that they didn't happen. So no. we'll, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> see. Anyway, we'll see I'll really back. enjoy my anxiety dreams tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you some emergency questions to take. I'll ask you this one off the top of my head. Okay. Um. Uh. Who is the most famous person you've ever been in a lift with? But that you didn't get in the lift with someone you met in a lift that you discovered in a lift. Oh, it's a difficult. It's a really a bad one. Like it's who is it? As in like nasty. It's Nigel Farage. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Um, I'm so angry that that's my one. Like, <laughs> can I just have it on the record that it was not out of choice? Well, no, but that's the whole point of the um, question. So you're getting a lift and Nigel Farage is in there. Yeah, I was in the lift with Tom Lucy. It was at the Global Studios, and we were going up to do our podcast and he he's just quit hasn't he but he used to do his lbc chat show all oh, right yeah, yeah and uh he was getting off at floor three and we were staying on to four and i could tell tom had noticed him and he tom was laughing and i was sort of doing this you know going don't you dare don't you dare and tom i don't know if you know tom lucy but he's one of those who can't resist making yeah. a situation awkward if there's an opportunity to and so just as nigel got out tom went well if anyone knows how to leave you will and I was, you know, you know, when you're trying to push the doors together on the, I was, I was just pressing the shut button really, really quickly. But yeah, oh, awful. Yeah. That's good. I mean, he should get that everywhere he goes. Oh, I yeah. mean, that's the, um, 
I've I but I've been in a room I've been in a room I did uh, this week uh, and he was on a, I wasn't on with him but he was I, I ended up I've been in a sketch with Nigel Farage because you know no. they, they do that awful sketch at the start of this week and I didn't want to do it and they made me do it and I wouldn't dress up but I I actually I, I, without knowing I answered something that Nigel Farage said so I've actually performed with Nigel Farage in a sketch and then he was in a room and I just tried to ignore him but there was this I don't, it was it I, you know you're obviously projecting but it yeah. felt like this presence. And then after I'd finished, or maybe just after he'd finished, I was, it was like after midnight in this building and we were walking down a corridor and I found myself walking down a dark corridor right behind Nigel Farage and there was nobody else oh. there. And, you know, A, it's creepy and B, you know, there's a part of me going, but, you know, this is it. I could at least <laughs> no punch him around. in the face. Yeah. <laughs> I could punch him, or I could make love with him if if he was if he was so inclined. I think, uh, but yeah, I, I didn't punt. I, it was one of the many opportunities I've failed to yeah. punch or harm a politician. But, I'm uh, so annoyed. My answer is so like a bad no, person. A good I really wanted it to be a cool one. That, but it's a good. It's a good. It's got. It's a proper story. There's a punchline to it. It's put. It's, I, I, I don't want to big myself up, but it's a brilliant question. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> it's a brilliant emergency question. Um, as long as people have, because some people go, no, I haven't. Oh yeah. yeah. What about what about an escalator? No. Have you ever seen anyone famous? No. But it's the most famous person you've been in a lift with. That doesn't have to be someone who is famous. It's just the most famous. So yes. you know, you can... yeah, could have been one of the panel pantomime players. Yeah, yeah. that's true. <laughs> uh, and um, if you could have, uh, if all the museum and art galleries in the world got together and said, we're going to give you one item you can take home and keep from all the museums and art galleries in the world, and you can have it, and it's yours. Which thing from an art gallery or a museum? So a piece of art or a historical artifact. Oh, that's a or whatever good one. Yeah, what would you like? You can have it. It's yours. Um, I think I went to the university, uh, the Museum of New Zealand okay. in Wellington, and um, that was amazing. It's like seven different floors, and each floor is like a new era in New, new Zealand's history. And the further up you go, the further back in in the history. So it's it's literally like going back in time. And um, there, there was a whole floor dedicated to the Maori culture, and they had this huge boat that they would go up down on the on the ravines on, and it was massive, and it had all of the like s- sort of scary looking figures on it. It was amazing, and it could probably fit like forty people on. Um, yeah. And it, it was it was handmade, hand carved, and hand painted with with specific paint with, referring to which tribe and everything. So it was really special. Okay. It was really specific. Um, yeah. But also, like, just really badass. I'd rather have that than a car. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'd have that, and then I'd tweet, I'm sailing to school in my Maori boat, like the pro sailor I am. <clears throat> I know the kind of thing. I've watched uh, Moana. It's the kind of thing in Mo- the, the boat. That's that it, have in yeah. Moana. It was like yeah, that. Yeah, it was sort of like that meets a, a Viking boat. It was, yeah. you know, long and narrow, but it was yeah. really cool. Really, really cool. Yeah, I'd have no, that. That is a good choice. I appreciate that choice. I don't think I live near talk- any rivers. Oh, well, I'm, I'm in Brighton, so I can just take yeah, it out seafront. on the seafront. Yeah. 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 It's a normal good, thing and to do. do. I'll do a random one for you. Before, when we did the backstage interview, every question I looked at was uh, revolting. <laughs> so I'm going to see. Um, oh, this is this is a good question for me because I, I I've sort of been hallucinating on the. I go and collect uh, take stones off a field every morning. Don't worry about it. I'm 52 years old. Is that My what happens is, when you get to 52? It is. It just all starts going wrong. But this week I saw. I'll tell you the question, then I'll tell. I'll give you my answer later. What is the most inexplicable thing you have ever seen in the sky? It's the most inexplicable thing I've ever seen in the sky. See, I'll tell you mine from this week. The most inexplicable thing in the sky I've seen this week. I was on and my. It's a, I do a live stream of me moving stones, and it turns into this paranoid thing where I think I'm being watched and think I'm being uh, ch- hunted down by people who are <laughs> against. It's a very. It's a. It's a full on uh, psychological drama about me trying to make something in my life by building a wall from stones that I find on a field whilst thinking that people are trying to stop me doing it. It's a, it's, it's a big, th- it's an artistic piece in itself. But this Monday, I kind of looked up and there was a, what I thought was a drone flying in the sky, like about 100 yards away. Uh, and it sort of saw it out of the corner of my eye, but it had like, it looked like a biplane, it had propellers and stuff on it. And then it just fell at, into the ground, right from quite high. I just went, Jeez. and then I thought, did I? Because I often hallucinate out on the field because I'm being weird. <laughs> and I thought, did I? Did I see that? Or didn't I see that? And then I kind of got up the field and I went and had a look to see if it was there. And I found this black 
um, party balloon saying happy birthday on it that I kind of thought, well, was that? It was like Roswell, you know, Roswell, they saw aliens coming down and then they go, no, it was a weather balloon. And then they got some shitty little bit tack. And then I thought, I thought, well, it must, that must have been it. And then the next day, someone online said, oh, we've lost our drone. Has anyone seen our four year old's been playing with our drone? And they lived sort of just oh. the other side of the field. And so then I even said, oh, look, I think I might have seen it. I thought I was going a bit crazy and I thought it was. Um, with yeah, a drone, I think it might though. be in the field, and then they then, then they, I did that at night, and I did the whole story, and then the morning went. It's all right, we found it. <gasps> oh no! <laughs> and so it was. It wasn't them. So I just thought. So I don't. I still don't know if I saw. It would make sense. It was a drone. It would make sense. That it was a drone Bloody that hell. was flying by being piloted by a child, and then just got out of range and just fell. You sound like just fell um, to the ground. Isn't it? Robbie Williams believes in UFOs. It, it does. Yeah, yeah. You, you've got a lot but of that I, energy going on right now. I don't think it's a UFO. I think it's a drone. But you know. But then it wasn't there when I went to look for it, and so I was all yeah. geared up to go and try and find it on the field and be a hero. And then they went, no, we found it. You, you, and then that was it. They clearly think I'm crazy. I mean, if they didn't think I was oh, crazy. Oh, yeah, for they definitely. They're, they're definitely stone. telling their kids to avoid that man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I think the most uh, like alarming thing, I was yeah. once walking the dog. If This would have been like when I was like about 14, because it was when Raoul Moat was on the run. Okay, and he was yeah, still, wow. everyone was saying, like, keep your eyes out for Raoul Moat. He's, he's dangerous. Yeah, and I was walking the dog. And I saw a helicopter fly over, and a helicopter didn't fly over where we lived very often. And so I naturally jumped to the conclusion that Raoul Moat was in the woods where I was walking the dog, and that helicopter was looking for them. So I stayed with the dog next to this tree trunk for like half an hour and was ringing my dad. And it was in the like, it must have been about 14 because I was on my first ever mobile phone. And I was ringing him, being like, Dad, have they found Raoul Moat yet? And he was like, What? What are you on about? I was like, Have they found Raoul Moat yet? And he was like, No, why? I was like, because there's a helicopter above us, and I think they, I think they might be looking for our milk. <laughs> and uh, my dad's quite a typical Yorkshireman, and he was like, "That was yeah. bloody stupid. Get home right now." I was like, "Oh, okay, okay." Yeah, no, it's but the minute you start getting paranoid, then that night you can't get yourself out of like, it. You convince yourself. Well, yes, I was I put the dog for walk that night, and there was a just a like a really big rubber glove on the road outside our back gate, <laughs> and like a washing up glove, but like a really thick one, and just one. And you kind of, how did that get there? There's no yeah. reason that could get, how did that get there? And then I kind of start, then then I felt, I heard, when I was just going to sleep, I heard a noise and I thought someone's downstairs. I went downstairs and then I started thinking they had that glove because they were going to smash the window. You with build the a whole storyline. Yeah, yeah. You build a whole yeah. episode of Line of Duty yeah. around it. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. definitely going mad. <laughs> um, so I was looking at, I don't know where I got this from, but you did, uh, you've been obviously touring um, your various shows. You've done a couple of shows. Yes. Um, so far, you were just about to work on your third. Uh, I noticed that you'd done. I think this is yours rather than mine. You, yes, it is. I think you did a, a run of a tour where you went from Cambridge in the UK to Milan to Antwerp. Is yeah. that was that three nights in a row? Yes, that was. Fun. Yeah, how did that? How did that go? Because I've I've done. Gig, I was trying to work out what mine was. There was one I did something like Hull, Paris, Milan, yeah. and Nottingham. It was something like that. It was it was just ridiculous. Uh, yeah, it was crazy. But, uh, um, I, I remember. Cambridge I was really ill for I got a really bad right. like to the point where you're doing your hour show and it's it's difficult for you to get through each line without coughing and spluttering and yeah, yeah. Uh, it was that night that I had like my biggest reviewer in I'd never had a national newspaper in and they were in so I was just absolutely beside myself with like oh god you know the, of all days um, yeah. and it didn't even end up that bad a review but I was just like just really grout, run into the ground. And so I was back at the hotel for half past 10 with, you know, syrup, honey and lemon and all of this. Had to be on the flight to Milan the next day. But then I'm so Yorkshire because I'm like, well, I'm in Milan. I can't just sit in the hotel. I've got to see it. So I'm dragging myself around Milan to try and, like, take it all in whilst I'm ill. And then by the time I got to Antwerp, I was so tired. I, I, I feel bad for Belgium, but I, I, I couldn't tell you what Antwerp's like. I didn't, I didn't go outside. Um, yeah, that tour was mad. I also had um, Ab- Aberdeen one day, and then the next night was Bournemouth. So yeah, I was just no, that's, flying that's, the whole uh, length of the UK. And you get to a point. I mean, it just because the people who book the gigs often don't think about the journey. But uh, there was one I got, which was something like. Plymouth to Norwich oh. and I worked out and I worked out even if I got up at nine o'clock in the morning and drove and yeah. didn't stop 
Yeah. I still couldn't guarantee I would make it no. there. No. Everyone day. just assumes, like, because we're such a <laughs> yeah. tiny island. Oh, you can go yeah. anywhere. You know, you just this way, that way. Well, you sort of think Plymouth and Norwich, they're both in the bottom half of yeah, the country. Yeah, literally. They they're both south half. of Birmingham. It'll be fine. <laughs> Have you heard that thing about I'm, the guy who was doing a, a double? He was an American act, and he was he was uh, doubling, and he thought Northampton and Southampton were, like, okay. the same area, just north-south yeah. of the village, uh, of, of the yeah. city. And obviously, he finished his gig in Northampton, had a call from this bloke, bloke in Southampton, being like, where are you? And he was like, I'm on my way over right now. And he was like, well, where are you? I'm in Northampton. You're in where? I obviously <laughs> went, but. It's very good. Well, thank God for thank God for those uh, tour yes. arrangers, where, yeah. whatever they're bloody called. Bloody don't, they don't care about us. They hate <laughs> us. Um and oh, well, let's let's briefly talk. We don't you don't have to talk about this because you've, you've done a show about it. So I'm sure you're fine about it. But vague was about um, you growing up with uh, yeah. epilepsy. Yeah. Which my sister also. I think maybe it was the same thing. I don't. I was I'm a bit younger than my sister, so I don't know the full details. But she had sort of juvenile, you know, adolescent. Yeah. Epilepsy, which I think is, is the same thing. Yeah, that's right. So it kind of um, it kind of manifested itself in like about 14, 15 years old, and I started. I'd be in a conversation like with you now and my eyes would just sort of suddenly be doing that. And so my mum and dad thought I was rolling my eyes at this. They thought I was being really rude and stuff. So they didn't really detect there was an issue. Uh, And so, yeah, Vague was just about me growing up with all of the usual trials of youth and, 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 you know, house parties for the first time, festivals, going to Zanti with your mates on a holiday where you're meant to be, you know, down in alcohol and on very little sleep. And both of those things are things you're not meant to do if you've got epilepsy. So it's, and I wasn't a hundred percent honest with my parents growing up about it. You know, if I had, no. if I had a seizure, I, I wouldn't tell them. So right. we were all up until I was about 22, we were all under the impression that I had a different thing to what, was actually going on so it's kind of about oh, really? yeah it's kind of about that just because i i saw it as a as a hindrance and i saw it as something that might stop me from being able to do what all of my mates did yeah yeah and rather than address that head on i just sort of pretended it wasn't happening which is a stupidly yeah, dangerous thing to do but but that's the weird thing because it is a you know i remember it when it was affected my sister she is the same sort of age yeah. and my sister was you know was always wanting to be out and do stuff and was very active and I, I know I don't remember much about it, but but you know, she was really rebelling against it. And it's just the it's the worst time for something like that 100%. to happen to. And it's it, it kind of it it hits girls more than boys as well, doesn't yeah. it? I think. Yeah, so it it's, does. And it's, it's and it's still something I have to manage a little bit now in terms right. of you have to have a certain amount of hours sleep. And with a job where you're often coming in, at, you know, after yeah. one two in the morning on the last train home, and then you might have to be on a writing job at nine a.m. That there's there's sometimes things that I've got to maybe juggle a bit more. And even now I feel like if I if I say that, if I say, oh, well, I'd, I'd need to be back home by this time, I think, oh, people are just going, she wants to be home early or she wants to lie in tomorrow morning. It's like, no, I, I literally can't do my job if I don't do this. So, yeah, yeah it's, it, it, it was an interesting one. And, then, you know, what it's like when you do your first Edinburgh show, you, you feel like you've got to do a sort of self-introduction type show because no one knows who you are. But also you can't just do the generic, oh, I'm, you know, in my young 20s and I'm struggling to navigate adult life. And So it was kind of a, it was, it was a generic story with a sort of its own twist on, I guess, like a specific No, I mean, no, it's for, as a comedian, it's gold. It's a fantastic oh, yeah, thing was, to have to as a comedian. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we all dream of. Yeah. It's, a, you know, a, a treatable but still interesting yeah, yeah. Uh, condition to fall down on us that won't kill us but no, we'll be I'm enough sure. to and so many people <laughs> like, i'm sure your sister will have had this but when people hear epilepsy they immediately think like flashing lights and foaming at the yeah. mouth and it wasn't any of that with me it was it was just eye rolling and sort of occasionally going vacant and um yes <laughs> just, yeah coming around and just being like oh something's happened here aren't they because like there's a smashed glass on the floor and i don't know what's happened for the last 10 minutes so yeah. Um, well, I don't know, but it's it, but it's good. I think it is things that you know. I don't think I've seen ever anyone talk about that, and that was a you know, it was obviously a thing that concerned our, with our family. And I think that it's it's always good when um, comedy can talk about something. I mean, I've seen little clips of that show, and it's uh, you know, you it's you've get, you're giving people permission to laugh at the yeah. funny side of it as well yeah, as as well so. as uh, educating as well. So it's you know, I it's a so. it's a 
It's a great. So that is that the one that's on next up? Yeah, is, or is yeah, it's actually yeah. on next up. I'm just going to turn this light on because I'm aware that I'm going incredibly into the. In, I'm look like I'm coming from a cave. So one second. I like it because we've suddenly got serious, and you know we've. Uh, oh, there we go. That's that's ruined it. Hang on. We're getting serious, and it's suddenly going darker and darker. It's nice to see your little kitchenette, though. That's as light as it gets here in. Uh, that's nice. I was just saying it was very moody because we thought that yes, it was, it did. We, we were sort of coming down. To a more yeah. serious topic. Well, we go with the serious topics. We go dark and moody. <laughs> then yeah. Let's lighten up. Yeah, yeah. And ask you a, a rude question yes. instead. Well, that's uh, so. And uh, mood yeah, lighting, that's, well, that's, I think it's called mood that's lighting. Cool. I'll, I'll ask you a couple of the most questions, then I'll let you. I'll let you go. It'll all be good. It's all going to be good. Um, uh, have you ever seen a ghost? That's what I would like to know no, from you. No uh, way. No. no way. No. 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 You haven't seen. Don't believe in them. <sighs> I don't believe Beforehand in him. you were talking about. Yeah. I, I don't believe in him, and I don't want to believe in him. So I feel like even if I saw what I thought in the back of my head was a ghost, I wouldn't allow myself to believe it. I'd, I'd, I'd tell myself over and over and over that there's a logical explanation for it. I, I can't stand the idea of one existing. <laughs> the whole thing they terrifies I, me. That whole hauntedness I, I, stuff can't. can't I've got. We've got a, a crying baby in our, no, our house. That no, isn't, no, 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 no. Uh, Oh, baby. Um, no, you see that? I hate, I hate. And right. Are you in like, the fair, top room there? Um, we're in the attic now, and I think this is where the baby yeah, is in the attic. No, this, no, no, this, no. Uh, me out. This house used to be a doctor's, and they and then they they built like the next door, which is like all the hospital rooms, and so they had like a mini hospital Richard, here in this house. Why did you buy that um, house? <laughs> because I didn't know that when I bought it, I, and also I don't believe in ghosts. I don't understand but, when people go for it. Like when we were in Adelaide. Uh, there's a big sort of group chat for all the comedians and one of them was like oh tonight do you want to go around this uh uh like dilapidated uh mental asylum it's meant to be haunted i thought absolutely not <laughs> i'm gonna go to the pub that's what i'm gonna do oh it's fun it's good fun to no it's good I, fun to I get can't it. Stand the it. ghosts only come when we're, 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 we're both me and my wife have heard the baby crying <sighs> at the same time and it's not our baby and we've gone in and it's not our baby and th- and that, but, honestly, but it's, only, it's only happened when we've been really, t- really tired as well. So I think when you're a new parent, you're really tired. Any sound would sound I like a baby. I can't stand this. It's happened, happened a lot. No, no. The next door neighbours don't have a baby. Oh no! I, I, honestly, this is horrific. This kind of looks like with this Zoom call, it looks like it could be a another paranormal activity film, doesn't it? Like any minute <laughs> now, some figure's going to appear behind me or something. <laughs> It could. I'll let you know if that happens. Don't you dare! Might, Don't might, stop it! it. I now feel like I've got to keep looking. <laughs> might be. It might be your brother. It might be fine. He might just walk in. Oh God! Um, uh, all right. We will. We're going. We'll let me see what I've got for you. Um, what is the worst thing that's ever happened to you when you've been kissing? Oh, um, so the worst kiss ever of my life. Yeah. I don't know if it's just worst thing happening. It's just the worst kiss of my life. Okay, that's fine. And it, it was uh, on the dance floor of a nightclub again. Uh, and uh, it, it, his tongue must have been genuinely like a sort of newt or a salamander because it was so <laughs> thin and so long. And he just shot it to the to the back. I was yeah. about 17 years old. And his actual technique must have just been like straight. Yeah. straight and it was like... Um, it was like right at the back. Yes, um, I've experienced the. It was not for the same guy. To the point where I gipped, I, I gipped, and I pulled away because I was going mm, like that, and it was yeah. yeah. I mean, I, it probably was helped by the fact that I'd been drinking a lot that night, so anything going there was probably going to aggravate it. But it was yeah. it was awful, really, really it's bad. A, to the point where he tried to, he tried to add me on Facebook the next morning, and I saw his profile picture and just thought. That's the bloke with the long tongue. Absolutely right, not. Yeah, no. Declined. It's a difficult thing because you don't. If someone kisses badly, who tells them? Because I, I've had that. I've had the exact same thing where someone's just basically placed their entire tongue non. It's like a Ooh. slab of yeah, yeah, meat in your mouth. It's not even moving. It's just there, and it's just there constantly. It's not. And then darting. you start thinking, well, they clearly don't know that. Yeah, so, they don't know. No one's told them. But I don't. I've never had any. Comp- so I could be. Re- <laughs> exactly. I could be that person to somebody else. Some maybe somewhere else. There's somebody going. Oh, I snogged this girl, and <laughs> she didn't put enough tongue in. I don't. I don't know. She didn't put her entire <laughs> tongue in my mouth. <laughs> I don't know. It's right. Nobody actually. I mean, sometimes I'm sure people have been told that they're a good kisser. But yeah. Nobody's ever believed. Very me, I few have. people have been told that they're 
bad. Yeah. Yeah, I've never told and someone And you probably that. would still tell a good... It's rude, isn't it? You go, you don't go... You know, you're, you are you don't tell someone they're kissing badly. You're not allowed to do it. You can't. But you'd probably go, oh, you're a good... Yeah, you're a good kisser. Uh, can't, oh, I'm going to... I'm moving to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> I can never see you again. It's so hard. It's so hard. I, uh, I think so. I've, I've, my answer was that someone's been sick. Someone's been sick. Someone's been sick in your mouth. Yeah. Whilst... The other person was sick. I'm pre- I can't remember this. This, but I obviously remember when I wrote this book. Maybe you are um, bad at kissing. That's what brought it. Maybe on. I'm. Someone was sick in my mouth, and then, but we carried on kissing. Uh, Richard, that's gross. After I swilled, you know, swilled it out. That's vile. That's that. Even You've the smell on, of it you? is is enough to make you, you want to leave on. a room. Got to got to carry well, on. Well, fair play. You commit. Were you like this? Will show that I'm not afraid of commitment. <laughs> That I will take someone at their worst and their best. <laughs> okay. Well, look. Um, I, well, we know you've got this thing coming up uh, for next up in July. If you, if yes, that's, uh, I believe fifteenth July be is, is when okay. I'm okay. Is when I'm up. So that's for the people who are watching live. It may we. This may go out after the fifteenth. Okay. Yeah. Yes. 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 So, um, <laughs> do you do you have any plans for? The future, do you know, Do I have you've got QI, QI for the is coming up. Richard, our job is illegal. <laughs> We've got no plans. Yeah, the QI episode will be out at some point. Um, yeah. yeah, and uh, and hopefully I'll I'll do a, a couple more. I'm I'm always doing something like a, a live stream quiz or whatever. But as you say, we we might we might have been wiped out as a human species by the time this goes out. This might just be what people watch to learn what the human race was like. Yeah, and they'll take from so. it uh, bad kissers, <laughs> bad kissers who believed in ghosts. Yeah, yeah, that could well be. Um, well, it's been uh, lovely talking to you. I very much enjoyed watching you on. We recorded roast battle at the same time. Oh which you were God, great that was on, good, thought, wasn't it? That was. Uh, good it was fun. a lot of fun. So you can catch that somewhere if you want to catch that. You've been on. Have I got yeah. news for you and QI? Yeah, it's yeah. all happening. It's all happening. And then the coronavirus came and destroyed your career. I know. And I know. I'll have to build <laughs> myself up young. back up from the panel you pantomime. Will. Uh, but uh, no, it's it's in, an incredible uh, rise, very rapid rise. You won the um, uh, So You Think You're Funny. Did it was, it yeah, was it so you think right. you're funny? Yeah, yeah, 2017. Yeah. Yeah, yeah very quick, very quick. So that's. Uh, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm very impressed with the way things are going. You're very funny. Cheers, Check out uh, Maisie Adams's. Oh, um, you bastard. <laughs> you bastard. Uh, Special on Next Up Comedy, which is always worth a look. The people at Next Up are fantastic. Uh, and you can find uh, my episode thank you very much. The Chase, I'm sure, if you fancy. We'll, we'll look for you on The Chase. I'd say that's and, funnier uh, than, than a lot of my standards. I, w- I think I want to ch- I want to choose the – I'm going to go for the highest amount Do of money it. possible. That's the one regret I don't have because you'd rather go out looking um, like you're being ambitious – then go out looking like you've taken the safe bet and still been shit. I mean, shit. if you'd got through and taken money off them and they'd won and then they were just looking there, I could have had another 75 quid. If the woman before me took the hire off and she brought back 45 grand and I, <laughs> I was going to have the cheek to come and sit next to her having taken 300 quid off that. No, oh, it's good. I'm, I admire you for that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Maisie Adam. Thank, thank you thank so you. much, Rich. Cheers. See you again next week. We've got uh, Nathan Caton next week. See you then. Bye-bye. How'd you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>